Hi, this is Mike from Connected German, back with another German video. Today we're going to be looking at part one of conditional sentences, the Venn Clause. Let's get right into it. A little overview of the Venn Clause. Venn is a subordinating conjunction, uh, and there are several in German. And essentially what Venn does is it connects two different phrases together. But unlike a coordinating conjunction, like and, but, so... This doesn't necessarily uh, join two complete sentences that can stand by themselves. In other words, it's adding additional information to the sentence uh, to add clarification. Uh, then is translated as if or when, and this is essentially just like English, how you would form a conditional sentence. Okay, so first some examples in English, of course. You have the question, do you like to drink coffee? And you might answer it with something like this. I like to drink coffee when I wake up. So maybe not all the time, but just when you wake up. This condition is really uh, is really just like our Venn clause. When I wake up. And just like in English, the Venn clause really helps you to build a more complex sentence and give a more realistic answer. Sometimes there isn't a straight yes or no or definite time. Sometimes it's... Uh, it's linked to something, right? You need a condition. And this Venn clause helps you to do that. Uh, here's another example. Who likes wearing shorts? I like wearing shorts if it's hot outside. In this case, if it's hot outside is our condition. That is when I will be wearing shorts. So let's take a look at how we form this in German. And essentially what we're doing is we're taking two clauses and putting them together. And they're joined by the word Venn and separated by a comma. First clause is what is done. Wearing shorts, for example, or drinking coffee. And the second part includes the word ven. We call it the ven clause and gives the condition. When or if something. So, and one other thing here is that, and this is really unique to all subordinating conjunctions like ven, is you have to have the conjugated verb that's in that Venn clause be moved to the end of the clause. It still agrees with the subject, but it gets moved to the end. So let's take a look at some examples. Uh, ich trinke Kaffee, wenn es kalt ist. And this is, I drink coffee when it's cold. If we look at it, our condition, or our Venn clause, is wenn es kalt ist. When it's cold. This is what is done. Ich trinke Kaffee. I drink coffee. Note that the comma is there in the middle. The comma is required whenever using a subordinating conjunction like Venn. Now if we take a look at our Venn clause and just take out, uh, take out the Venn, by itself as a regular phrase, just stating a fact, es ist kalt, it is cold, where we have es as the subject, ist is the verb, kalt is the adjective. But something happens here, as I mentioned, that when you use a Venn clause, you notice in the example above, ist, the verb, has been moved to the end. So let's highlight that. S is our subject, ist is the verb. We see them highlighted in green and red accordingly in the example. Subject and verb towards the end. Verb must be moved to the end of the phrase, to the end of the Venn phrase. It has nothing to do with the first clause, ich trinke café, that's its own thing. Now the advantages of a Venn clause, as I have mentioned, is makes it a little bit more complex. It allows for a more um, complex answer, so you don't have to just say yes or no. You can actually provide a condition, and this is, this is actually pretty realistic, and is more in line with what you would say in a real world experience, right? Not just a textbook answer. Um, what we're going to be looking at in part two is, of course, a few more examples of moving the verb to the end of the phrase in our Venn clause. Um, but we're also going to look at how you can begin a sentence with a Venn clause. All of these examples here had the Venn clause as the second sentence, or the second clause, where the first clause was actually what is done or what you do. Um, 
and you can actually, just like in English, you can have this Venn clause come first or second. There's a little trick to what happens when you begin the sentence with the Venn clause, though. We'll take a look at that in part two. Uh, thanks for watching, and be sure to stop by connecttogerman.com for more videos. Stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching.